thank you, Mariana, for the nice introduction. Indeed, I, I started my career in Eurostat, so you never forget your first love. Um, I start with an apology on behalf of Commissioner Thyssen. She very much regrets that she could not be here today. Um, she would have made the point that statistics are not just about numbers, but they are about people. And the statistics she likes very much at the moment is 235 million. This is the number of people now at work in Europe. It's a number that has increased over the recent uh, months. Uh, when we started out as the Commission three years ago, the new Commission, the first goal was jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, we pushed for investment, structural reforms, and fiscal responsibility. We launched the European Fund for Strategic Investment. We applied the Growth and Stability Pact intelligently. Uh, we can't take credit for everything, but I'm sure that if that number was going down instead of up, we would be getting the blame. We need data. We need data that is precise and up to date, and we need rapid an uh, answers to uh, take rapid action. In the post-truth era, this is more urgent than ever before. Reputable institutions need to provide timely information, otherwise the providers of alternative facts certainly will. And as the famous quote says, uh, they use statistics uh, the same way <clears throat> drunks use a lamppost for support and not for illumination. People need policies, not politics. Statistics are not just about people, but they're about policies, policies that get people's jobs. In his State of the Union address last month, uh, President Juncker sent out ambitious goals. Goals related to climate change, to migration, globalization, the digital age. And to design these policies, we need accurate uh, information. Let me give you a few examples. First, sustainable development and climate change. As President Juncker made clear in his State of the Union speech, Europe must lead the fight against climate change. In order to lead, we need to know where we are. And only then can we map out the direction in which we are heading. The EU was instrumental in shaping the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, we now must carry out these ambitious goals. We will launch a reflection paper on the follow-up to the UN Sustainable Goals, including on the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The European statistical system is already contributing to the global monitoring of Sustainable Development Goals, and the national statistical institutes are at the heart of monitoring national progress. Um, and Eurostat is also contributing at the EU level, first by coordinating the EU indicator set, and secondly by producing yearly monitoring reports, and indeed I believe that the first one is due next month. We also need to study global supply chains to determine the environmental footprint of production and consumption. With the United States on the sidelines, Europe must take the lead, and your help will make that possible. Second on migration. The fast integration of refugees and migrants is a moral, social, and economic imperative. The Commission launched an action plan with more than 50 actions to promote integration of third country nationals. We launched a European dialogue for skills and migration to promote exchanges between EU institutions, businesses, and social partners. To carry out these initiatives, we need reliable information. We already have indicators of integration, but we need to know more. We need timely estimates of the skills of immigrants to compare these against labor market needs. Um, we, for, our, <clears throat> for our part, we have set up a skills profile tool for third country nationals to help the early identification of skills of migrants already in um, arrival centers. There is another reason why we need to uh, up-to-date figures on migration, a more practical reason if you want. The treaties of uh, Nice and Lisbon set out that direct population-dependent conditions for voting in the Council of the European Union, and of course official population data that account for migration are essential in that matter, and they're only possible thanks to the European statistical system. Third point I'd like to make, globalization. Many of the challenges discussed at these conferences are related to globalization and trade. And as President Juncker said, the Europeans are not naive free traders. We will defend our strategic interests. We must also make sure that companies pay their fair share of tax where they generate profits. This includes the digital giants 
who make vast profits from millions of users, but they are not physically present in the EU. We are not naive, but because we know our numbers. The European statistical system is already developing a European system of interoperable statistical business registers, and this will provide us with a global view of multinational enterprise groups. Thanks to statistics, we won't be shortchanged. Still, many people are worried about globalization. On top of globalization, we're also facing the digital revolution. New economic and business models are emerging. The collaborative economy is on the rise creates opportunity, but also uncertainty. Let me give you a concrete example. Here in Belgium, you can use an app to order food and someone on the bike delivers it to you. But what if this courier falls off the bike? How is he protected? How will he pay his pension? Um, in Europe, 15% of people are, are, are self-employed. One quarter of this group is actually a bogus form of self-employment and the number of people in atypical forms of employment is increasing. This fact doesn't just tell us something about the labor market, it also makes the urgency of the problem clear. It tells us that we need to act, and we need to act now. We need to protect Europeans in the digital age. We are now discussing two initiatives with the social partners. One, to provide minimum transparency and protection also for the most vulnerable workers. And another one, because we want all people in employment to be able to contribute to and benefit from social security. But to hold these discussion and to help shape the labor market policy, we need systematic information about the new forms of employment and entrepreneurship. It does make a difference if you're a lawyer working through a platform billing hundreds of euros per hour, or if you're a maid in Germany with a micro job that earns three euros and 50 cents per room. And on the macro level, if we take measures, we need to be able to predict their effects. What will be the effects on social security systems of each member state, on the sustainability of the welfare state, and on, of course, also on the competitiveness of uh, the European economy. So, in short, to shape the policy, we need clarity. And also we need to prepare people for the digital age. Here again, the data demonstrates the need to act. 90% of jobs require digital skills, but only four out of 10 Europeans have these skills. There are 70 million Europeans who lack basic literacy, numerical, and digital skills. To close this gap, we need to match people's skills with the needs of the labor market so that educators can design training programs. And to do this, first and foremost, we need reliable and accurate data. To defend social rights in a fast-changing world, we have launched a European pillar of social rights. This covers, um, this covers uh, 20 principles, uh, which cover equal opportunity, access to the labor market, working conditions, social protection, and essential services. In a demonstration of unity, the member states should proclaim the pillar of social rights uh, next month. This would be a commitment at the highest political level, and it shows that Europe stands united to protect a common European set of basic social standards. It is crucial that living and working conditions converge for the better. The pillar will serve as a compass to guide us. It will guide us in how we apply the European semester of economic policy coordination and in how we make use of our EU budget. So needless to say, this cannot be done without reliable data and that we need to be up to date on, uh, to be kept on the path for inclusive growth and social empowerment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I said that statistics are about people and policies, but I have to add a third P, and this is payments. We're currently preparing the EU budget for the better part of the next decade, the multi so-called multi-annual financial framework. And of course, now more than ever, we need evidence to underpin our decisions on how we allocate resources to different policy areas. I know that um, Commissioner Thyssen is very proud to be uh, Commissioner for Eurostat. It's, uh, she sees it as a formidable resource, not just for the Commission, but for everyone. Uh, open evidence, which is open to scrutiny by everybody, is essential for policy making. Accurate information available in the public domain helps journalists and think tanks and every policy makers advance the debate, and it helps citizens to inform themselves. There is a lot more information out there. Um, the connected economy, 
provides a wealth of information, a wealth of data. And the availability of this data uh, for official statistics uh, would help also make people's lives better. Of course, at the same time, this poses ethical questions, what you will be discussing in the next, next panel. Uh, we need to safeguard the privacy of individuals. Public and private data custodians have a huge responsibility to prevent the abuse of citizens and enterprises' data. And in a post-truth world, it is not enough to just publish all this data online. We need to illuminate, not to complicate. We need to tell the stories which are behind the statistics. In conclusion, data not only informs us how to act, but it often makes clear that we must act in the first place. And for this, you're essential. And we were, without you, we would be flying blind. Um, in the future, as I believe you already discussed yesterday, um, you will need to find where the gaps in our knowledges are, even perhaps before we know they exist. Um, this is a timely conference. Its focus is on key trends that affect society, migration, globalization, new economic and business models, sustainable development. By getting to grips with these trends and coming up with practical future-oriented measures, this conference can have a real impact on our work. So I'm sure you have plenty of good ideas that we can put into action. So I wish you a very productive second day of the conference. And I hope that together you will manage to unleash the power from statistics. Thank you.